Welcome, welcome, welcome again. Mario Michel here. Today's topic the fanatical mind. Basically, this is Mind, Character, and Personality, Chapter 5. The fanatical mind. So, what we're going to look at today is, of course, this chapter. And I'm pretty sure as well, that's the long chapter we're going to be looking at. And so maybe we may have to do it in, I don't know, I guess five or six parts. But um, we will see how, if it is that long, then we're going to go with that, with that route. Other than that, we're going to get right into it. So let's go. Chapter 5. The fanatical mind. Now, um, interestingly enough, the author begins with a note by saying the Webster Dictionary defines fanaticism as excessive enthusiasm or unreasoning zeal. Now, it is not a bad thing to be enthusiastic or to have zeal, but we need to be careful how much um, enthusiasm we have. And so, to have too much, in the sense of excessive, that's called being a fanatics. And we may actually use that term. And actually, you know, better yet, you call yourself a fan even though it is wrong. For instance, you may be arguing about your team with somebody else. And, and your team may be the worst team ever in the league, but yet you still uphold that team as if it is the best ever. This is called being a fan. Yes, this is called being a fan. In the term, it's called fanatics. So that term also now is used when, it's, when it comes to religious beliefs. As I mentioned earlier, if you do not want to bend the rules, the Pope said, you're a fanatic, you're a fundamentalist, you're an extremist. That was his definition of fundamentalism, which means people that are not willing to bend the rules. No, we're not being fanatics, we're not being fundamentalists, we are just following God's rule. So, to keep that in mind, Let's get into the topic. So, today's topic, we're going to look at fanatics and fanaticism will press in. We are living in a time when every phase of fanaticism will press its way in among, will press its way in among believers and unbelievers. Satan will come in speaking lies in hypocrisy. Everything that he can invent to deceive men and women will be brought forward. Letter 121-1901 True. We are now in a fanatical time because people are being selfish and um, it's all about themselves. That's why the Bible says in uh, in First Thessalonians chapter chapter three, no second Thessalonians chapter three, um, second Timothy chapter three, where it mentions uh, in the last days, people are are going to be lovers of themselves. From verse one to verse five, you're gonna have a list of things that's gonna happen. So being a fanatics, being a fan of yourself is one of the issues we're going to have in these last days. Now, how does Satan do it? Well, how Satan does it, 
we have found in our experience that if Satan cannot keep souls bound in the ice of indifference, he will try to push them into the fire of fanaticism. When the Spirit of the Lord comes among his people, the enemy seizes his opportunity to work also upon different minds and lead them to mingle their own peculiar traits of character with the work of God. Thus, there is always danger that they may allow their own spirit to mingle with the work and that unwise moves may be made. Many carry on a work Many carry on a work of their own devising that is not prompted by God. Letter 34, 1889. So what does that mean? What does that mean to be indifferent? Well, it basically means you don't care. Mm, we don't really care. And if he, does, if he cannot get you to be that, then he's going to try to make you become the best fanatics ever. Which means you always... Um, even though things are bad, even though, even though the person you're supporting is wrong, you still want to push forward with that ideology. And nowadays we have a lot of ideology going on, which is a psychological um, game. Satan is using, I call, manipulation game to get people to do the wrong thing. While God is trying to help us use our psychological influence to do the right thing. Because Satan doesn't come to tell you who he is really. He manipulates you into believing that he is something when he is something else. God on the other hand comes and says, hey, this is me. I am here. What you see is what you have. What you see is what it is. There is no um, other way is just that and so do you want to me to work with you or do you want to work with do you want me to work with you to get better satan comes um you know what i'm the best you've ever had and all that and then when you go with him then you realize he's the worst ever that's how he manipulates people to think about him so when he cannot make you become indifferent about a situation then he tries to make you become if he sees that you are uh, a, uh, a fan of something, he's going to keep pushing you to become the greatest fan or greatest fanatics. So, that's how actually Satan does it. Two ways. He always, have, he always has two ways. Either one works or the other one works. He's always going to bring at least two ways. Now, the result of cherishing defective tendencies. I know in chapter 4, which, 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 which is called influence of the spiritual influences in the mind, we talked about the tendencies, if you remember, right before this one. So now we're going to talk about the result of cherishing defective tendencies. Remember, we talked about not um, cultivating those those bad tendencies now we're going to talk about the result of cultivating that there are some who will not hear that is for sure whatever the truth they will tell you they will still not listen until something bad happens and even then they may still cling to what that which they are doing wrong because satan already bewitched them so long have they chosen to follow their own way and their own wisdom, so long have they cherished defective heredity, her, hereditary and cultivated tendencies of character that they are blind and cannot see afar off. Now before I continue, let me, let me go back to the first part, to the note. And this is going to be my question for everyone. Are you... An ex are you an excessive, enthusiastic person, or are you a moderate, or I should say, a logical, enthusiastic person? So, are you an excessive, I would say, fanatics, 
or are you a logical, zealous person? That's a question for you guys. Now, now, my other question for you is this: as I'm going through this right now, as we as we read this, we, we read this rest of this of this um, paragraph. I'm gonna have another question for you guys again. Now, of course, they are they are blind and cannot see afar off. That's right. By them, principles of perverted. False standards are raised, tests are made that bear not the signature of heaven. Some of them, some of these very ones, make their boast in the Lord as a people who do righteousness and forsake not the ordinances of their God. Interestingly enough, manuscript 138, 1902. This is how Satan deceives us. He doesn't say that God doesn't exist. What he says is, um, you don't need to follow God. Or, he doesn't say that, he doesn't say that, um, don't, don't follow God. He says, follow God, but also follow me. He makes you look in the outside as a Christian, in a sense, but then you are basically the devil. That's what he does. Now, the question is, are you cultivating or in and cherishing defective hereditary tendencies? If you are, then you know what to do. If you're not, that's a good thing. Keep at it. If you're not sure, ask God for help and ask him to help you understand what's going on. That's my question right now. Are you cherishing and cultivating defective hereditary tendencies. The ball is in your hand right now. Let's move on. Be rid of a healthy mental attitude. Now, what was the result? Now, before I get there, what was the result of cherishing defective tendencies? Satan blinds you and you cannot see afar off, meaning you cannot see what's coming in front of you anymore. You're blind. And how do the, how can a blind see? They can't see. That's what happens. So the same way in the spiritual sense, you can you don't have spiritual discernment. You're blind spiritually. That's what Satan does. Let's move on. Be rest of a healthy mental attitude. Those taken in Satan, oh, those taken in Satan's snare have not yet come to a healthy mental attitude. They are dazed, self-important, self-sufficient. Hmm, hold on. I'll come back on that. Oh, with what sorrow the Lord looks upon them and hears their great swirling words of vanity. They are puffed up with pride. The enemy is looking on with surprise at their being taken captive so easily. Letter 126, 1906. You know what's interesting? Um, Satan himself uh, boasted one time and he learned his lesson as he fell from heaven. Well, I, I, I don't want to say one time only, but maybe... But he is actually more shocked to see how bad we are how bad we are boasting against Christ than he actually would now do we see anything in our society nowadays that show people that are being self important self sufficient maybe if you go back to that same text again which is the second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 5 Talking about lovers of themselves, modern lovers, modern lovers of God. Um, if you if you think about that part, somebody who is lover of him or herself, modern of God, is basically self sufficient, self important. That's what it is. So we are in vain 
glorifying ourselves. We are being proud. Actually, ooh, um, if you guys, you guys, are, there's also a text called a text in Proverbs chapter six, where it talks about the seven abominations. One of them is pride. Yes. One of them is pride. Um, that's the seven. The seven. Um, you know what? Let me actually quickly go and read it for you guys. Let's see if I can actually read it for you uh, in uh, in Bible Gateway. Just I'm gonna add that one because that's important. I'm, I wanted to read this one. Oh, I need the English version. Let's see the KJV. Where is the KJV at? KJV. That's right here. Okay. So Proverbs chapter six. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's that one. Hmm. Yes, there we go. From verse number 14. And, and as, as I'm reading, you can also re, uh, read it through, read as well. From verse number actually 14, yes. Um, you know what? No, I'm going to start from verse number 16. These six things, so these six things, six things, six, six things does the Lord hate. Yea, Seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Okay, number one is a proud look. Right here, we looked at pride. They are puffed up with pride. The, the number one thing that the Lord hates is a proud, proud look. Proud look. Number one thing, a proud look. But yet, what do we do? We are being pride, proud, loudly proud. A proud look, a lion tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. You can read the whole chapter for yourself. That is what the Bible is saying. Now, the question is, are you a proud person? That's what you think about. Are you a proud person? Let's move in on. Let's move on. I think we're going to end right here. Oh, wow. It's already 18 minutes. I'm going to end right here because I don't want to make it too long. Spurious humility. Well, you already know it is not actually humility because the word, the adjective spurious is already there to make it fake humility, basically. Like the spurious Sabbath, the fake Sabbath, which is what they call now Sunday. Yes, that's also spur spurious. Much fitful. Spurious humility is seen among professed Christians. Some, determined to conquer self, place themselves as low as possible, but they try only in their own strength, and the next wave of praise or flattery carries them up out of sight. They are not willing to submit wholly to God, and He cannot work through them. In James chapter 4 verse 7, Submit yourself unto God, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes, and I also break that part. So I'm not just preaching to you, I'm also preaching to myself as a sinner. Take no glory whatsoever to yourself. Do not work with a divided mind trying to serve God and self at the same time. Keep self out of sight. Let your words lead the weary and heavy laden to Jesus, the compassionate Savior. 
Work as seeing him who is at your right hand, ready to give your strength for service. Your only safety is in entire dependence upon Christ. Review and Herald, May 11, 1897. Yes. Have you ever tried to see somebody who is um, supposedly um, humble? <laughs> yeah, they always look nice being humble. But um, in the end, you give them only the praise. See how they react. See how they react. Mm. Yeah, that that happens. So, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna end with this one. Actually, is this part talking about you? It is superior humility talking to you or is it about you do you see yourself in it guys that is a, a fact we have to fight we have to ask God to help us fight Satan because of course if we try we're gonna lose ask him to help us and we're gonna come victorious well, so this was chapter 5, The Fanatical Mind, uh, part 1. So I, I hope to see you guys again. And uh, if I do not see you guys again, I hope to see you when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Mother out.